hi everyone in this video we are going to discuss about java factory design pattern which is one of the most widely used design patterns in java let's start with the intent of this design pattern so first we define an interface or an abstract class and then let the subclasses decide which object to instantiate and we are going to define a method in the interface or the abstract class which we call it as an abstract method sorry a factory method which actually lets a class defer the instantiation to one or more concrete subclasses as we are trying to achieve pseudo polymorphism right by letting the subclasses to decide uh, the what to create so we call this factory method as virtual constructor and factory design pattern falls under the category of creational design pattern and in general right factories uh, are involved in creational stuff right and we are creating objects here so hence the name factory design pattern now let's see the steps involved in the implementation of factory design pattern so the first step we are going to define a method which we are calling as factory method right so we are going to define the factory method inside an interface and then let the subclass implement the factory method and decide which objects to create so these are the two steps involved in the implementation now let us take an example and understand it so consider we wanted to implement a notification service a notification service uh, we can take an a typical example like uh, a transaction right so whenever we do a bank transaction we get uh, a otp right sent to mobile right via sms and email so in some cases uh, it will be one of them or in some cases it will be both right so via email and sms so this is what we call it as a notification service right so that can be through email that can be through sms push notification so here in this example we wanted to implement such a notification service where we wanted to you know uh, implement this service through email sms and push notification so let us see how to implement this as discussed we are going to first have an interface defined so i'm going to have an interface here which we'll call it as a notification and we are going to have a factory method the name of the factory method will be notify user which returns nothing right and we are going to have the concrete subclasses one class for email notification sms notification and another class for push notification so these will be the different classes which are going to actually implement the notification interface right so as these classes need to implement the notification interface so it has to actually these classes has to provide the definition for the factory method right so once this is done we are actually done with the concrete classes defining the concrete subclasses right now we are going to create a notification factory class which actually lets the instantiation of the objects so this factory class will actually be used to create the objects so this completes the design pattern and to test this design pattern right we are going to have a test class where we will have a main method and then test this whole design pattern right so this is the implementation this is the uml class diagram for the implementation now let us see this in terms of code so first let's define the interface i'm going to create an interface i'll call my interface as notification and remember you can also have an abstract class defined here right so i'm just uh, defining interface in this example right so my factory method will be notify user which takes uh, you know no parameters right notify user now let us create the concrete classes so i'll name my first class as email notification which this class is going to implement the notification interface so we need to implement the method notify user here right 
So I'll just have a small message here. I'll just say sending email notification, right? So in the same way, what we'll do is we'll create another class where we'll call this class as SMS notification, which we'll use this class to actually send the SMS notification. Right, so the same class, uh, S, uh, so SMS notification will be another different class, which is also going to implement the same interface notification. And we are going to have the implementation logic for this SMS notification class as well, within the factory method, right, which uh, we are getting from the notification interface, right. So for now, I'm just having this message as my logic, right, within this factory method. And we will have another class defined where we'll call this class as push notification sending push notification right so this will be the three classes which are going to actually implement the notification interface now we'll create the class notification factory class which actually decides which object to create And for that, let's actually create a method which returns notification object. And I'm going to call my method as create notification. And this method actually takes a parameter. Based on that, we are going to actually call different uh, subclasses, right? So based on the content, or the information sent via the parameter, right? So what we'll do is we'll compare this with whatever we have, SMS dot equals channel, right? So in this case, we'll just return the object for the SMS notification, right? What if the content is email right if it is going to be email then we will just return the email object email notification object same is the case for push notification as well so if it is going to be push We are going to return the push notification object. Else we will just return the null, right? Also, let's include one more condition. If channel is null, or if it is empty, we'll just return null. So this completes the definition for our notification factory class, which has a create notification method. And uh, depending upon the information passed to it as the parameter, we are go going to create a different object here, right? Now let's create a main method. For that, I'm going to define another class which i will call it as notification service where we are going to have main method in it and create an object for notification factory and then we'll call create notification method and say for example i wanted to actually call the sms or uh, create the SMS notification, right? Push or send the SMS notification. So what this method is returning, it actually returns a notification object. So let's capture that in a notification object. And then we'll actually call the factory method in the final step, right? So that's all. So you can see 
it very clear, right? So here, uh, the let's call this as a client class. It, the entire core logic, right? Uh, the implementation of the concrete subclasses is hidden to the client, right? Now, let's actually execute this method and verify. So we can clearly see here sending SMS notification. And if you wanted to send like, you know, email notification, we just need to modify this parameter. And that's all. So you can see sending email notification. Same is the case for push as well. So you can see sending push notification, right? So uh, it will be very easy to create the object based on the parameter which you send here and you can see the entire core logic or the implementation of the you know uh, the core classes right concrete classes will be hidden to the client so this is how we can actually implement the factory design pattern now let us actually see the advantages of using the design factory design pattern right so it provides approach to code for interface rather than implementation right it actually makes the code more robust less coupled if you observe there is no tightly coupled uh, between the objects right so all the classes are independent and uh, which is easy to extend even right for example if you wanted to make some change in the sms notification class right so we can easily do that uh, being client program unaware of that right and the other advantage is it provides abstraction between implementation and client classes through inheritance. So these are the different advantages using the factory design pattern. Now let us see what are the real time examples where the factory design pattern is used. So we have a calendar class, number format, resource bundle classes, right? So a calendar class defined in the Java util package has the method get instance, right? So it uses the factory method design pattern. And all the wrapper classes like integer, boolean, so all these uh, classes also uses the design pattern, uh, factory design pattern. So to evaluate the values using, uh, you know, value of method, right? So actually, is uses this factory design pattern. So these are the real time examples where we can see this design pattern, right? And when to use this design pattern is so when whenever you know that your uh, classes which are implementing the interfaces right so is going to change frequently then go for factory design pattern so in this video we actually started with the intent of uh, factory design pattern how to implement it we saw that with an example that is notification service and then we saw what are the advantages of this pattern and the real time examples of it right where it is used. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.